Hi everybody, this is Nick, and today I'm gonna to show you method number two for making this stylized dumbbell chart, uh, kind of what I'm calling maybe a two variable or two group uh, dumbbell chart two groups because we're showing not only pre and post or two differences between two points in time, uh, which is what we might normally do with a dumbbell chart, but we're also showing two groups, uh, comparison of two groups across those two periods of time on a single line or a single item. So in this case, I'm going to use this for uh, potential survey data. So maybe I want to know how two different groups performed on the same survey item over time from point A to point B. Um, and so the survey items are here along the y-axis. Our percentage rating there is going to be along the x-axis. You would make that whatever uh, sort of metric that you would be using to visualize there in your chart. And then we have the group one and group two and pre and post um, in this dumbbell chart. Now these are just fake data so that you can sort of see this sort of stepwise um, process here and what this looks like so we can really see the dumbbells here. But your data would be different. Maybe some of the posts would be greater than the, or would be uh, less than the pre's, et cetera. Uh, and so your data might be just a little bit different. I'm gonna go down here and we're just gonna make this from scratch. This is a little bit different than the last video that we made where we use an entire, uh, we created the entire chart from an XY scatter plot. In this method, we're actually gonna use a combo method. So we're gonna start with a bar chart and then we're gonna add some series of data into it uh, to uh, sort of create those dumbbells. And there's a couple little things and tricks that you have to pay attention to along the way. So follow along with me here. So in this first table right here, I just have my survey uh, items and then I have my 100%. This is gonna be a bar chart. So whatever your maximum value, it's going to be 100% down the line because those are gonna be the gray bars in our chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a bar chart like we normally would. And let's just, I'm gonna um, zoom out just a little bit so that we can see all of the data here. I'm gonna get rid of the title. Now. Anytime you have a 100% and you insert a bar chart, Excel automatically gives you a, a axis of 120%. So we're gonna go ahead and update that to 1.0. I'm also gonna hard code this to zero so that it doesn't change on me later on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create my, actually I'll keep the units at two. We're gonna go ahead with the bars and turn them gray. And I'm going to increase the um, gap width, or I'm gonna decrease the gap width from 182 to 100. And that will become evident uh, why in just a second. Okay, so everything looks pretty good here. Now what I'm gonna do is, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the border of my chart because we know we don't want that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add the dot. So we've done this before as we, as we uh, have made uh, dot plots and things like that before in XY scatter plots. The first thing that we need to do though, is we need to add a series of data into this chart randomly so that we can change it into a combo chart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the group one pre-data. I'm gonna push control C to copy it, highlight the chart, and I'm gonna paste it in. When you paste it in, you get this random series of data here. We don't care about that. We're just going to right click, select change series chart type, and the combo is already selected. If you were at bar chart, you would want to make sure that this is a combo chart. The survey rating will stay at clustered bar and the group one pre-data is going to be a XY scatter plot. We'll change it to that and it automatically puts that on the secondary axis. Now, the secondary axis, the vertical axis shows up right here. It's zero to 100% because the data we put in was in percentages or were in percentages. So what we're gonna actually do is change this in the format menu here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the number from percentage to number, and I'll keep one decimal point there, just like this. Now we need to know what our minimum and maximum value for this is going to be, and this is a little clue over here. So I have this table of Y values right here. It starts over here, this is the group one Y values, and then this is the group two uh, uh, Y values here in column P. But it starts at 16, that's gonna be our maximum, and it finishes at one, that's gonna be our minimum. And how I got that was it's just double the number of survey items that we have or the number of gray bars that you're gonna have in your chart. So we have eight survey items, we're gonna have 16 uh, as a maximum for our secondary Y axis. And then you zigzag across. So group one, whichever set of dumbbells you want on top is gonna to be uh, the maximum 16. The next, uh, the next line down is 15 and that's gonna be our group two dumbbells. So you zigzag 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and so on all the way down to one.
Now, for our axis, I'm going to go ahead and update that just so you can see what that looks like. 1.0 for the minimum and 16.0 for the maximum. Now, you can see that it only goes from 1 to 15 because our major unit is set to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to 1, and now we have 16 there. And just you're going to have to trust me on this one. So once you do this, we're actually going to increase the maximum by 0.5, and we're going to decrease the minimum by 0.5. So the minimum is going to be 0.5, and the maximum is going to be 16.5. So whatever your minimum and maximum, just um, add uh, 0.5 and subtract 0.5 from that minimum and maximum, and then put that into your axis there. All right, now this looks pretty good for me. Now let's go ahead and start adding some of these data. We're going to right click and I'm gonna say select data. Now these are the series, so my survey rating is right there. And then I have my G1 pre, that was just my fake data. I'm gonna go ahead and just edit this and we're gonna add our first series of dots. So it's set right there for the name of group one pre. The X values are right here, that's what I'm gonna to point to. The Y values are the G1 Y over here, that's 16 to two. And I'm gonna click okay. Now you can see that first uh, row of dots starting to appear. That's pretty cool. You can see now they're, they're uh, appearing on the top of each of those gray bars. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the G1 post. Just like we normally would, point to the X values, the Y values, group one. Perfect, now we have what look to be our dumbbells. They're starting to take shape. Now let's add group two pre. Push enter. We're going over to the group two Y values there. Push OK. We'll add the uh, group two post. X values, Y values. All right, and now we have both of our sets of dumbbells. Now what I'm gonna do is push OK, and let's go ahead and stylize our, dumb our dots just a little bit. So I'm gonna make sure that all of the pre's our, uh, the marker is set so that the fill is white. And for this top one, we're gonna make sure the outline is blue. And then this top one, I'm gonna make sure that the outline is blue and the fill is solid blue. I think that's a pretty nice way to sort of designate the pre and post, having sort of a filled and not filled dot. And then this one is gonna be white. This is our group two pre, that's gonna be white and we're gonna set that to an orange. And then our um, group two post data is already orange. Now there's something that you might notice from our data here that Excel loves to do things backwards when you do bar charts. So if my, my source table here is starting at survey item one and goes to survey item eight, if I insert a bar chart from this data, it's going to sh show up in opposite. So we need to click on our y-axis right here and we need to reverse the axis. So over here on the format axis menu, I'm gonna say categories in reverse order. And then the x-axis appears on the top, but I still want that to be on the bottom, so I'm gonna click under horizontal, uh, horizontal axis crosses at maximum category. Now everything looks to be lined up with our data. Everything there, the group one pre is 90% and survey item one right there, 90% up there. So that's a nice little check. You have to make sure to do that step, otherwise your data is gonna be flip-flopped in the combination chart because of that secondary axis. Now let's go ahead and insert our connections, our connecting lines, the dumbbell sticks, and we do that with the difference column right here. So for group one, we have our pre and post data, but then we also have a calculated column here, and this is just the difference between the two. So it's a formula equals this cell here, minus this cell, and then you just drag that down. Some of these might be negative on your end if you're using values um, from actual data sets, but in, for my demonstration purpose here, all of these are positive values. It's okay if yours are negative too. So let's go ahead, and what we need to do in order to create that first set of dumbbells, click on the post data, or click on whatever data series is above the, um, when you, have two, when you have two dots here, whichever one is above the other, whichever one is the highest set of dots, that's the one we're gonna click on. So click on that, we're gonna click on the Skittle here and click on error bars. And we want to get rid of the vertical error bars, we don't need those. But then we're gonna click on the horizontal error bars and over on the format error bar menu, we will click on minus, no cap, 
and then click custom there and we're going to specify the values and this is where we point to that difference column and you're going to want to put the same difference column range into the positive error value and the negative error value so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then for the negative error we will do that and then I'm going to push enter and OK and we will see that we have the beautiful dumbbell sticks now you'll see that if for some if our data changes and for instance if this post data was all of a sudden lower I'm going to say 20% than the pre, you can see the dumbbell stays connected because we are putting in both positive and negative uh, or values into that positive and negative custom value. So you need to make sure to do that for both. So let's go ahead, I'll just change this one back. And then we need to do the same thing for our orange, for our group two error bars. Get rid of the vertical, the horizontal, we're going to format to minus, no cap, and then custom specify the value. We're going to point to the group 2 difference column now for the positive, the group 2 for the negative. Push enter and OK. And now we have these beautiful dumbbells. Really nice. And so now the secondary axis, you could delete it if you wanted to. You could also make it very, very small in font and then turn it white just in case you might need it in the future. If you wanted to put some uh, data labels on this chart, I might just go ahead and isolate that top um, pre right click and say add data label and we're going to move this to the top above and here I'm just going to brute force I'm just going to type pre you can do that with these types of data labels if you wanted to have it connected to a value in a cell you could also do that post and then for the group one and group two labels, I would just insert text boxes and put them um, and put them right next to that and sort of group everything. And then you can put this into your report. If you wanted to embed those labels, um, you should check out the first video, the first method that I made. You can do the exact same way of embedding labels in to this chart as we did over there. So this is a pretty cool chart. Thanks again to the inspiration, the Washington Post for this really nice chart. I'm not sure if the chart has a name, but let's just call it the swimming lane chart for now until uh, somebody else corrects me uh, in the comments. So I hope you guys had a great time watching this video. I had a great time making it for you. Uh, if you like it, I hope you uh, click that like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. You'll get notified every time I post a new video in data design, usually PowerPoint, Excel, or Word. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time.